Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special conversation with the Prime Minister, the Honorable Bruce Golding. I'm Ian Boyne. The Prime Minister will deal with issues relating to the economy and also issues relating to Jamaica's impending agreement with the International Monetary Fund and matters related to that. Jamaica's economic growth rate over the last four decades has been anemic at best. We have not lived up to our economic potential. What has kept us back? How can we move from this status of being an economic laggard to really fulfilling our potential? What are the prospects for the Jamaican economy in the near and midterm? These are some of the issues we want to discuss with the Prime Minister. We want to put some of the questions that you have for him. And the Prime Minister has agreed to deal with these issues. We thank you so much for having joined us. Prime Minister, thank you for having initiated this um, conversation. Well, thank you very much, Ian. Thank you for agreeing to, to be part of the program with me. Good. My first question, Prime Minister, is are you finally willing to admit that your government severely and catastrophically underestimated the impact of the global economic crisis and that the country has paid dearly for this three downgrades after? Severely and catastrophically, no. Uh, I would respond to you by saying there's not a single country in the world that did not underestimate the extent and the impact of the global crisis. The United States, the multilateral agencies, the World Bank itself has had to revise its own projections three times. Uh, so, no, it, it, this is, we have never faced anything like this in the last 50, 50 years. And it, therefore, in the last 70 years, one could say, certainly not from the Great Depression of the 1930s. And therefore, it, this was brand new territory for, for every country. Uh, could we have been more proactive, even in a cautionary position, to say, now look, let us assume the worst case mm -hmm. scenario and let us take those measures? Perhaps, yes, we could have. Uh, what could we have done differently? Uh, there are a few things that we perhaps could have rethought. Uh, for example, I mean, public sector wages. We increased public sector wages from 80 odd billion dollars to 125 in recognition of the fact that wage, new wage settlements were due. We went through a protracted negotiation. We tried to do what we thought was best for the, for the public sector workers. Uh, in hindsight, that has put a significant burden on us at a time when, as, as events have proven, we were least able to bear that burden. But in terms of, of, of accepting some responsibility for not seeing what could have been mm -hmm. seen, that sort of criticism would have to be also directed at Barack Obama and Prime Minister Gordon Brown and, and all the heads of European government. But, but certainly, PM, by the, the beginning of 2009, it was clear that the economic tsunami that was upon the uh, world was of a far greater magnitude than might have been, yes, that's true. That might have been that's thought. True. I mean, yeah. the September 2008 was, was significant yeah. just in terms of the impact, what happened with AIG, uh, Lehman Brothers. So the government had time. Um, and for example, you, we mentioned, you mentioned what could have been done, an early approach to the IMF could have been made. How would you respond to that? We, we started talking to the IMF, you know, a year ago. As a matter of fact, on Friday. Exploratory talks. Yes, on Friday it was pointed out to me that we started re-engaging. Uh, that was the actual anniversary mm -hmm. of our, of our re engagement in talks. Um, bear in mind that the IMF assistance addresses primarily your external account. Yes. Your ability to pay for the things that you have to uh, afford. That's crucial. Um, and in that regard, we, working towards that, uh, we, we had a time frame. The NIR went down to 1.6 with the special drawing rights that we were allowed under the new G20 initiative. Uh, we were able to get the NIR back up. So that in terms of the external accounts, we, we had some space to negotiate. What has taken the time is negotiating the fiscal program and the medium-term economic program, because understand, 
while the IMF is lending you money for your external accounts, the IMF is saying, and quite understandably, put your that we need, you need to put your house in yes. order or else you won't be able of to course. repay us Absolutely. The, the fund. And that has taken a considerable amount of time because of how bad our situation is. And it is bad. Mm -hmm. It has been bad for many years. There are some countries that have entered into agreements with the IMF um, because of the impact of the crisis. Yes. And that has disturbed their normal economic rhythm. That's not our situation. Uh, we had a bad situation even before the crisis came. Mm -hmm. We've been running deficits consistently now for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And let, let me explain what that means for the average listener who may not understand. If every year you are spending more than you are earning, what you're doing is simply piling it up on your debt. So that if this year your deficit is 20 billion and next year it is 35 billion and the year after that it is 46 billion, you're simply piling up that debt. And each year as you pile up that debt, more of your budget has to be set aside to service that mm -hmm. debt. So in the negotiations, the IMF and ourselves have been working to see now how do we fix that? Over what time frame can that be fixed? And what are the measures that are required? And those measures are not painless. Yes. Let, us be, let me mm -hmm. be very, very frank. Um, we have had the luxury for a number of years of simply going to the capital market abroad. So mm -hmm. we would go to Milan, we mm -hmm. go to Wall Street, we go to, to, to Europe. And we simply borrow and we normally announce with great celebration mm -hmm. that we have secured. Uh, all they have done is just to pile up this debt. That market is virtually closed. Mm. It was closed long before the downgrades. Um, it is certainly locked even tighter with the downgrade. Um, so that the, and, the, and the domestic market can support so much government borrowing and no mm -hmm. more. So you're at a point where the chickens have come home to roost. You're going to have to cut expenditure. You're going to have to increase your revenues. This is the tough, hard decision yes. that are very much at the center of the IMF negotiations. Which brings again, Prime Minister, the issue of the importance of having had intense discussions with the IMF early uh, so that you could get the funds which would free you up uh, fiscally so you would be able uh, to deal with your, with, with your fiscal situation and would not have to be relying no, on the domestic market. No. would have, have to be relying on the same high interest rate policies that your government had so severely... Um, you're, you, no. When you were in opposition, you were so severely criticized. No, I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're sort of misguiding yourself. All right. Um, the IMF funds, as I have said before, are not for fiscal support. Not Precisely. one penny of that will go to the But it will Affairs. open up no, other no, funds. No, no, let me finish. Um, it will open up access to some uh, multilateral funding. Precisely. But we have had access to multilateral mm -hmm. funding. Um, in fairness, give Audley Shaw the credit. Uh, he started re-engaging the multilaterals even before we took office. Yes. I actually accompanied him on a visit to Washington even before the elections to mm -hmm. indicate to them what our strategy yes. would be. Um, and I think, don't hold me to the exact figure, but I think between the World Bank and the IDB, we have sourced uh, well over 700 bill, uh, million US, I think closer to a billion. Yes. So that it's not that we haven't had that Precise. access. But far more could have come in. Well, with, more, with the IMF, yes, and, if um, we, and, and it is, and it is possible. It is possible that if we were able to shave off a month or two after the uh, of the time, then perhaps we could have been where we are about to be now, maybe two or three months earlier. But bear in mind, Ian, this is something that I don't think you're fully appreciating. Okay. The extent of the problems that have to be addressed. Yes. And it is not, I would never attempt to blame all of this on the recession. A lot of it is just stuff that has accumulated over the years. I'm not here today to sort of look cast, yes. blame on the past administration. It is my job now. It is mm. now my lot. I have to deal with it. But the fact of the matter is that we have accumulated this huge gap between the resources that we have and the demands on those resources that we now have to deal with it. And in dealing with it, our situation took much longer than the situation. I got a call two days ago from the, from the president of the Maldives, Maldives, who said he had just concluded an agreement with the IMF. Mm -hmm. How long it took him? A couple of months. Uh, but then his situation was nowhere as complicated, as severe as 